And welcome to Knights of Columbus Discuss. My name is Paul Morano, and my guest today is Mr. Ron DeStasio. Ron, welcome. Thank you, Paul. It's great to be here. Now I understand, Ron, you are the New Hampshire Knights of Columbus pro-life chairman? Yes, I am, sir. Yes. And uh, is it the, uh, did they change the name recently? Uh, recently, I last understand? year, they changed it to uh, the Culture of Life Director. Okay. Uh, here's my first question to you. Why do you do this work? There is a story uh, behind this. Actually, my wife tells the story a lot better than I do. But I am uh, obviously a transplant from New York. If you <laughs> listen to how I speak. I like it. But, what part uh, of New York? I grew up in Long Island. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And about, I guess about 30 years ago, uh, I, all I can say is my faith isn't what it is today. Okay. I mean, we, my wife and I would go to Mass, you know, our daughter was going to CCD, but the depth that it is now and the strength that it is now it just wasn't there back then. Okay. And we weren't exactly having an easy time with finances, and we were looking for a job someplace else, a transfer out of New York. And my wife's brother moved up to Nashua many years ago. She was thinking of this area. And two or three years, I would put in for transfers, nothing nothing would happen. And somewhere along the line, I, I don't know whether it was part of my wife's work with CCD at the parish, but there was a woman who went around promoting, and I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's called the Pilgrim Virgin Home Visitation Program. I have. Yeah, it was started by the uh, yeah. Legion of Mary years ago. And she started bringing the statue of Our Lady of Fatima to the house to pray the rosary with these other women. And it was first started, I was like, eh, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Right, right. Little by little, you know, I got into it, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, I was working one day, and my boss gets a phone call, and he says, did you put him for a job in New England? He says, well, it looks like you're moving to New England. Really? So, you know, my wife and I put a lot of stock in the, the prayers, probably most of the prayers that she had, mm. to uh, get me up to New England. And then coming up here, uh, I'm an only child, didn't have a lot of contacts up here, and at the time, I was at Resurrection Parish in Nashua. Nashua, very familiar and, with it. Yeah, and I was an usher. And my wife says, you got to find something to do, Ron, you know? Said, All right. One of the gentlemen came in and said, hey, you want to join the Knights of Columbus? Like for three, four weeks in a row. Okay. All of a sudden, I relented. That was back in September of... of uh, 92. At this point, you were, you were attending Mass on Sundays? Well, yes, definitely okay. attending Mass, right. but my faith wasn't as deep as it was. Right. It just wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't really listening to the Word of God when I went to Mass. I went because I knew I, I'd have to go. So you joined the Knights. And the fact of just joining the Knights, and this is how I see it, getting involved with the good works, working with priests, looking at the sacrifice, sacrifices that the priests go through daily to serve their parishes, uh, had an impression upon me. And little by little, I started listening to uh, different 
themes about the culture of life, or different activities, I should say, that were going on with, with, with the, at the time, I didn't even call it, the, they didn't even call it the culture of life, it was just different pro-life activities or yeah. anti-abortion activities. And, uh, but, but at this point in your faith walk, did you have a sense that abortion was wrong? That it oh, was yes. the killing of an innocent? Yes. Okay, you yes. understood that. I understood that. Okay. But at the first, I remember, I, I was probably under the old liberal, you know, guise of like, a, well, you know, it's wrong, but I can't tell anybody that it's right, wrong. Right, right. Personally opposed, but. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And it, it took a while of doing my own research, my own studying, my own mm -hmm. listening, going to the different marches, going to the different events, just preparing myself, you know, to, to learn more about, mm -hmm. you know, what was going on and to listen carefully, you know, because if you listen to anybody else, to them, it's, 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 it's not an issue, you know, it's, right. it's, it's never an issue. So it took, it took a lot of time for me to, to, and I was doing other things. I was a district deputy at one time, and I was looking at what was going on with the state, with the culture of life, with, with, mm. with, 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 and, and I said, you know, and I'm not bragging, but I said, you know, I think I could do, maybe do a better job. Mm. And after three years as a district deputy, I asked the state deputy, because uh, the, the current director, it was Stan Poland at the time, he was moving away. I says, I think I can do this job. I'd like to take a crack at it. And, and, and just in a nutshell, what does the job entail? Well, it, it's sort of like a coordinator, I would say, or even almost like a rah-rah man or something like mm -hmm. that, or, you know. A leader. A leader to get the word out on certain, uh, on certain issues. And, and I think I, I gave that to you previously when we looked at it. I, I always start out when I'm talking about what to do, what councils need to do. Mm. I tell them to take the, the four main avenues, and I always say it's, 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 uh, it's prayer, mm. it's education, it's outreach, and then it's called legislative action. So, so those four um, elements, you would say, are the framework to fight what you would call the culture of death. Right, exactly. Um, can we maybe go over each one of them okay. separately? Okay, all right, yes. All right, so because this is important for those who feel that they should have a part in this um, church militant uh, fight against the culture of death. Um, prayer. Okay, I think prayer I always put first mm. because it's the most important. Why? Because we cannot do anything without God. Okay. God gives us all, the, 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 and I'll get to that later on, but I mean, the, I know we had the gift of his son, but the first gift was the gift of life, and that's why it needs to be revered. So without God, we're not here. Mm. So I stress, I stress prayer in two ways. I stress for them to pray for the unborn. I stress them to pray for people who don't understand yeah. about what, you know, the, what? The, the, the negativity of the culture of death. I, I stress so them to pray for the, uh, to people who work in abortion clinics, right. you know, because right. we do go up and pray in front of the, uh, the Planned Parenthood sometimes. So one sense of prayer is directed outwardly, hmm. you know, to fellow Catholics or people involved in the abortion industry. The other avenue of prayer is directed inwardly to steal oneself, to strengthen oneself, to be able to, ab able to answer the mm. questions when someone asks you something about embryonic cell research or about yeah. end-of-life issues or about late-term abortions, that at least you have some type of knowledge to be able to give them the, the truth that's out there. So with prayer, it strengthens the, the ins in the internal and it, uh, and it's, right. it is for also the enlightenment of the external. Right, right. Uh, what would you say to people watching right now who would say um, that uh, those who are uh, consider themselves pro-choice are compassionate and they care about the women that are involved that have unexpected pregnancies? What, what would be your message to them? Well, my message to them would be, yes, there is concern mm -hmm. for a woman in crisis, but that's not the only person that is there. That's involved in this. Right. Yeah. Once conception takes place, there is another life. And there's no concern for that life if your only concern is for the ch what choice the woman is going to make. And you would probably even say there's no concern for the woman if you are, um, if you are supporting a decision for her to kill her child. That's true. That's true because yeah. the, the repercussions 
from abortion, and this is coming out more and more, and I think it was mm. hidden for years, mm. but the uh, you see it down in Washington, D.C. during the March for Life, you know, the women would silent no more. Yes. I mean, the, these procedures took place 25 or 30 years ago. They deeply regret their And abortions. they're still, yeah. still having, I went to a dinner for one of the pregnancy centers. In fact, it was the one for, uh, for Keen uh, last year. And there's, there's women that give their testimonies mm. about, and these women are like, now are like in their mid to late 40s. Yeah. And they aborted their child. And some of them decades ago have, have yeah. named the child. Mm. Some of them, the anniversary, go to a cemetery to pray for the child. It's their way of, of healing. Of healing, and yes, yes. And that healing is necessary. Mm. But if you look at what the mass media talks about, Abortion is like brushing your teeth. Yeah, I mean, you could a, a underage girl can go in for Plan B contraception, mm. uh, go in for some type of procedure, but if someone has to go on a trip in school or cuts their hand or needs medicine, you need a permission slip. It's amazing. It's all upside down today. Total. It's all upside down. It's, it's interesting. You, you mentioned uh, the Silent No More movements, which uh, Father Frank Pravone uh, leads. Um, it, it, there used to be a syndrome called post-abortion syndrome. Are you familiar with that? A little bit, a little yeah. bit, not a ton. Yeah, basically um, it's, its major tenet was that women who get abortions very often suppress it because they don't want to face the truth in which they, of which they did. And so in that suppression, a lot of negativity comes out in other, other facets of their personality, whether yeah. it be anxiety yeah. or depression or what have you. And the ones that actually go through the mourning process and go through the process of seeking forgiveness from That's God. That's the key, forgiveness, yeah. From God and from their preborn child, uh, those are the ones that are much better off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Now, uh, this whole thing, of course, is, is begun on a premise that uh, preborn human beings begin their existence and their life at conception. There is no discrepancy, is there, between what the Catholic Church teaches and what science is clear it's, about. It's, they sh you know, science and religion should not be mutually exclusive. They, need to, they need to work hand in hand. It makes no sense if, if they you even to Forget about one's faith. Just take mm -hmm. a look at it from a, from, from a biological point of view. Yeah. The life is there. I mean, it's not a full-formed baby yet, but if you take a look, and, and I think Priests for Life have done a good job with that, with, with fetal development photos that they put on their website. If you take a look at the child at eight weeks and 12 weeks, you can see. Yeah. You can see when the spine, spine starts to form. You can see when the eyes start to form. There's yeah. no doubt that that is a human being. What, what's interesting is that you say that there, there is no fully formed uh, uh, well, the baby's not born yet, that's yeah. all, yeah. But I would even say, uh, following reason, that a human being is not fully formed until they're around 25 years old after birth. Well. So, I mean, from conception to one's prime to one's old age, it's all one continuum yeah. of life. That's right. If you look at it purely from a scientific point of view, we, we begin our lives at conception, we end them at natural death, and the only thing in between is natural growth and nutrition. That's right. That's right. So the pro-life position is one of scientific accuracy. I would say so, definitely, definitely. And, and, and the more people, that's why uh, the pregnancy centers uh, that have the ultrasounds are very successful in getting women to choose life. Mm. Because I, I happen to know uh, for CareNet in Nashua and in Manchester, Right. Uh, at least 90 to 95 percent of the women that view an ultrasound choose to have their baby. Yes. And then I, the I services are there to get them through the pregnancy and afterwards. It's so important sometimes for women uh, to see wh who is actually within them before, yeah. they, before they make their, their decision, which they can't go back on. Well, it's funny because yeah. a few of the directors of the pregnancy care, care centers that I spoke to, he says, the men now, mm. they're probably obviously you know these, these, these are people living hard scrabble lives mm. not educated and all of a sudden he'd go wait a minute yeah is that what i did yeah. that's mine yeah you ain't killing that forget <laughs> it you know so that's it's kind of yeah. funny but uh, it's it's good that if that prompts the reality the truth behind yeah. what's growing yeah. inside yeah.
But the problem is yeah. for too long, and, and I think it starts back, and I, I took a look at some of the notes you had there, and I, I'd, given a, I'd given a talk a while ago about uh, what went wrong, and I, I made up a term. I called it the Helen Gurley Brown effect. You know, if you remember is, Helen Gurley I Brown, do. Sex and the Single I do. Girl. Yes, uh, Cosmopolitan magazine. Right. Yes. And that led to Sex Anytime. You're a free woman. Yeah, the sexual revolution. Sexual revolution, yeah. which in turn fostered more contraception. Yeah. And then when that happened, the whole idea of, of, of marital love yeah. for the purposes of, 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 of children, or even if you take a look at it really like we go back to science, just for the continuation of the species, yeah. was out the window. You didn't need to have that. No, it's all been um, uh, disintegrated, the yeah. notion of marriage, of sexual yeah. relations, and of love, and, then that, and of children. Unfortunately, and I, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that but, unfortunately led to the, the prevalence today of, of same-sex marriages. Yeah. yeah. Because children are not yeah. the most desired thing. They're just maybe a byproduct. Let me, let me summarize what you're saying right now, because I, I think this is ultimately important okay. in, in this culture of life battle, what okay. you're saying right now. Right. Because if you want to try to fix something, you need to understand the cause. The, the sexual revolution that began in the 60s and flowered in the 1970s inevitably evolved into our culture of death. Exactly. And it seems like what you're saying, and I fully agree with this, that, and, and I'll even add something to it, the invention and the popularization of the birth control pill that occurred in the 1960s and again became popular in the early 70s, this mentality of separating uh, life from love, of separating sex from baby making, right. this mentality began to permeate and permeate and hence, sex no longer became intrinsically linked to baby making or procreation. It, it now, because of that mentality of separation, can be used in any perverted way a, a person wants to for the sake of pleasure. Mm -hmm. it, ha it no longer has a natural end to it. And when you get rid of the natural end of procreation, you almost inevitably get rid of the natural end of permanent union. Right. Because in marriage, you had both of those ends tied as one. You were to, sex was an expression of a permanent bond, and which would sometimes, uh, if, if nature allows, uh, procreate children. That has all been disintegrated, and you can, you can almost narrow it down to where it began, the invention and the popularization of the birth control of pill. pill. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that created a, a premarital sex culture which inevitably, because of supply and demand, created an abortion culture. Exactly, exactly. And what it does is that everything is done for a selfish reason. Yeah. You know, it, it, no one is looking at the catechism. <laughs> a lot of Catholics aren't even doing it now, but, you know, mm -hmm. the catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, that unit of love for pro procreation of giving mm -hmm. of oneself to another. Totally, yes. But does, what the sexual revolution did, it's... Okay, maybe it's pleasure for your partner, but not really. It's pleasure for me. Yeah. Pleasure for me. And, and it's, so, uh, and it's so all not, built yeah, on selfishness. You're not giving your full self to the other. Right. Because you want to reserve yourself for yourself and future pleasurable right. experiences. So, so that notion of marriage, that I give a total so self donation right. to you and you to me exclusively and permanently, which really is the bedrock foundation of civilization. The family. The family. It's destroyed the family completely. It, it, it has broken down ever since. I mean, if, if you look at mm. certain statistics, especially in New York, or especially among Afri African-American families, I mean, they say about 40% of the births of African-American children, not even births, 40% of the pregnancies, I yeah. should say, end up in abortion. Yeah. And, and, and the key is... And this is my wife firmly believes in this. She always hounds me to talk about fatherhood. Where are the fathers? Yeah. yeah. There's no one there to guide them. There's no one there to give discipline yeah. or to, to educate. It's it's women doing their best, struggling in a in a you know when in sex, a household. When sex, marriage, and procreation are divided, they're no longer seen as linked. All of this hell breaks loose. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, wow, you know what? We only got to the first of your four pillars. Okay, <laughs> prayer. that's okay. <laughs> so prayer is important. By the way, that was a very important tangent, I think. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. The second one you have is education. How do we educate? How do we get the truth out uh, from a media that is doing everything it can to, to block the truth? Yeah, well, I... I or at like, least a mainstream media, that is. <laughs> we're, 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 we're doing media right now. And that's, but that's what I tried to do yeah. as, as, as the, uh, the, the chairman, and that's what I encourage the councils to do. We'll have pro-life chairmen of their own or through their grand nights, is to, is to make your members aware of the wealth of information that is out there. Mm. Whether it's through websites like Priests for Life or, you know, National Right to Life or American Life League or, or uh, Susan Life. B. Anthony yeah. List. That was part of my job. I, I started out like that is just making people look. Here is the information. If you don't understand somebody, mm. uh, somebody, I'm sorry, if you don't understand something fully, then take a look at it. Most people who are pro-choice have no informed choice whatsoever as to what they're doing. They don't, they don't they know. They look at one thing, Yeah. you know, it's my right, and unfortunately uh, the Supreme Court, yeah. you know, I mean, obviously there's a higher law, but the Supreme Court said it's their right, and they're going to invoke that right all the time. But there is a wealth of information out there about mm -hmm. fetal development, about, about uh, what goes on in uh, embryonic stem cell research. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that you're creating life to destroy life, mm. you know? Yeah. And then end the life issues. So education is important. That's, yeah. Um, educate yourself through the web. Through the web. Um, you can take classes. I mean, some, right. some colleges uh, have good bioethics classes, if that's your bent. Um, you could, um, um, if, you're, if your bent is to get up here and do a cable television show <laughs> or something, or write a, an article to your, to, your, uh, to your newspaper, educate people. Uh, very yeah. important stuff. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and, and even some of the, you know, if they take a look at the uh, encyclicals of the, of the popes, you know, yes. take a look at Humanae Vitae and what it says. So important. I mean, Pope Paul VI predicted all this. That's right. And he was even chastised by his own cardinals and That's bishops right. saying, no, 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 this is not the way to go. Some of them, yeah. Yeah. And he predicted the culture of death, and that was in 1964, we're that talking. That was 1968, and that 68 was... 68 was, yeah. was the, yeah, right, 68. And that was one prophetic uh, encyclical. Yeah. I would even go so, so far as to say it's one of the most important encyclicals ever written in the history of the world. Yeah. I put it, I put it after the Bible and the Catechism, but it's right up there because yeah. it relates to what we're talking about, the difference exactly. the distinction yeah. between life yeah. and death yeah. and the yeah. culture of life versus the culture of death. Um, so we got, we got to prayer, education. The third one is outreach. Outreach. Okay. Outreach has to do with our support of all the uh, pregnancy centers here in New Hampshire. Why don't you tell folks what, what a pregnancy center is? Pregnancy center? Uh, there's different kinds of pregnancy centers. Uh, uh, a lot of them go along the lines of care net. There's also birthright. Yep. But what they basically do is uh, support women in their decision-making process. I mean, sometimes they still go through the abortion, but they make them aware of what's available to them. Sometimes, for most of these women, they're like a, a scared rat in the corner. And I, you right. almost don't blame them sometimes because no, they, they have no somebody support. forcing them, yeah. a boyfriend's beating, beating them up, saying, you got to get the abortion. Mm. At least the pregnancy says, look, here is another avenue you can take. If you... You don't need to be a parent. Not everybody's meant to be a parent. So you can give up the child. For adoption. You can give up the yeah. child for adoption, right. And some places even have uh, housing for women who might be kicked out of their house because There's they're a few. pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so these pregnancy centers, um, like, like we were talking about earlier with education, they basically speak the truth about what's going on. And with on. the ultrasounds, they and could see their baby and give uh, assistance. There is, assistance. And, that, and that's what we do. That's part of what yeah. we did for doing the past few years uh, when we have the, uh, we had the, you know, they call it the birthright dinner back in February where Bishop Labashi spoke. We had all these councils bringing in all these non perishable items Very good. for the women. Yeah. And we had them fan out throughout the whole state as far as Littleton, over to the sea coast, mm. over the Keene. I actually founded a crisis pregnancy center in Massachusetts called Heartbeat. 
It, it, I've, I've seen that, yes. Yeah. Um, and I know that the women there who work tire, tirelessly, and they, they, do. get, they don't get a penny for it, by the way, uh, the ones that are at Heartbeat, um, they assist the, um, the women with un unexpected pregnancies through their pregnancy right. with financial uh, uh, gifts with, from the community. They, um, they drive them to doctor's appointments. Um, they, they help them after the baby is born with diapers and, yeah, and, that's, and food, yeah, baby yeah. food and all kinds of stuff that the, that the community um, volunteer, voluntarily offers to the place. So these pregnancy centers are a gift from God in as much as all of that support and assistance that a pregnant girl doesn't have these pregnancy centers can offer. Exactly, exactly. And it, it, it shows them a different path. Yeah. And a lot of times, uh, they even said to me, you know, some of the directors will say, uh, it is really a matter of economics. Okay, you know, I don't know if I really want to abort this child, I really want a mm -hmm. child, but what can you do for me? Well, this is what we can do for you. Yeah. We can give you baby clothes, we can help you, mm -hmm. we can give you counseling, we can give you you know, referrals for services with the state for Medicaid or for food stamps and things like that. Yeah, help assist yeah. through the, the entire process. Yeah. Yeah. So there would be, yeah. there, there is no need for fear. The only shame, and, and, the, and it's, it's, it's a little bit of a tangent, but I think about this all the time. Yeah. And I know a lot of women are in a corner and a lot of women are trapped when it comes to making a decision about having a child. Unfortunately, there's another side to the story. There are women with enough money, and that goes back to the pill and the culture of death, yeah. that they use abortion almost as a substitute for any type of contraception. Or birth control, right. Birth control. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know, I mean, there are a lot of women that have had multiple abortions, and yeah. it's, it, the, the, that doesn't get out there. Well, speaking of that, I'm glad you mentioned that, because th this might be a... I don't think this is a tangent at all. There are many chemical pills and hormonal pills that women take today that they think are contraceptives, but they're actually abortifacients. Right. They actually abort tiny babies, and they That's don't right. even know it. That's right. Um, one of them is the common birth control pill. It has this backup mechanism, doesn't it? Are you familiar with that? <laughs> the, the, com the common birth control pill is meant to um, you know, keep sperm from, from reaching egg. Right. And, and oftentimes it does that, but sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, what happens is the, the chemical compound in it makes the woman's uterine lining... Yeah, it can't attach itself to the uterus. The, yes, the that I know. The tiny human It travels, being, but does, does, can't go anywhere. Yeah, it yeah, goes down yeah. the fallopian tube right. and is unable to attach itself right, exactly. to the womb yeah. because of the hormonal comp composition of the pill that the, the mother is taking and flushes out of the mother's system without, without them even knowing it. So many women are aborting their child, uh, children unwittingly today. Right. Plus... You, you mentioned the, you know, the chemicals that they're using. You know, my wife was a, a nurse for, year, for many years back, yeah. in, back in New York City. This is important. And they don't even know what they do. The body is not supposed to regulate, do, do this, do this, yeah. do this. Do, do. There's a natural rhythm. Even if, even if you're not in a religious person, yeah, there's no, what's called no natural law. The, okay, this is, this is what is, I find fascinating because it's such an irony. Most people who believe in the, the entire movements of global warming, who believe uh, that are big um, ecology people, and I think I happen to be an ecology person. I, I care about the, the environment and the world. Stewardship. But, stewardship. stewardship. Yeah. But most people who are very deeply into that, into the environment, uh, are the ones that promote and condone um, the, the ruination of the ecology of women's bodies. And I, I find that interesting that they care about the earth and, and it's, uh, you know, and, and it's uh, you know, destroying the earth through, through chemicals and so forth, but they don't care about what women are putting in their bodies in terms no, of the chemicals. It's an irony. Yeah. They, yeah. And they're really, a, there's, we could do a whole show on what the pill actually does to women, uh, their brains and their, their, their makeup, but yeah. it's not good at all, to put it, <laughs> to put it very, very uh, succinctly. It is, in a sense, abusive to women yeah. to, to take yeah. contraception pills. Well, I mean, it, it, it can lead to mm. certain cancers. Yeah. It's a, I it's mean, a it, class it, one carcinogen. Yeah. 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 All right. 
Um, the, the third, the fourth well, thing, actually, uh, yeah. after prayer, education, and outreach that yeah. you have down here is legislative action. Le le yeah, okay. The, the political dimension. Well, we take, yeah, we, we take a look at different bills that are coming up, whether it's at the state house yeah. or whether it's at a, uh, at a national level. Uh, I tell people that they should, you, you know, and as being a member of the Knights of Columbus, we cannot endorse any particular candidate. Okay. But we tell people that they need to, to, to as best as possible, vote pro-life. I mean, even Father Frank Pavone says sometimes it's the lesser of two evils. Which candidate is going to hurt less less than the <laughs> other candidate? And you really have to ask that question this time around, don't <laughs> we? Exactly. <laughs> Which candidate is going to hurt less? So, yeah. and, and I'll get back to that in a second. Right. And then, like I said, a lot on the national level, uh, like I said, I get a lot of emails. I like the Susan B. Anthony list. They have links where you can go in and vote and contact your senators. I just sent stuff out on the, uh, with the, uh, what was it, the conscience with the uh, act that the House passed, but the Senate hasn't passed yet. Okay, religious you know, conscience. Yeah, yeah, forcing different uh, organizations to supply these services and things yep. like that. Yeah. Uh, and then in the past, in, 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 this, in this state, I remember we had the parental notification on that, although the problem is, is that the legislator swings back and forth so much, yeah. it's hard to get anything passed. I mean, last year, at the beginning of the year, and I get, my wife's got a lot of chutzpah for a little Italian from Brooklyn. <laughs> she got a lot of chutzpah. She actually called, not this last time, but Chris Sununo and, and spoke to him. And she said to him, don't you understand? You don't need Planned Parenthood. Yeah. There, there's this, there's that, there's this. I sent them copies of every single pregnancy center website through his email. And at that time, he voted to defund. Now I guess he has got different, you know, really irons nice. in the fire. It's mind-blowing. And blowing. she called again and left message to him. And I said, where, where is he going with this? Doesn't he understand that, oh, yeah, most of their money doesn't go for abortion. I'll tell you what, go to Planned Parenthood today and say, okay, not that I agree with this, give out contraception, give out this, mm. give out that, give out that, don't do any abortions. Right. Look. They would, th that, they would be flabbergasted. They would never they do that. They don't do ultrasounds. They don't do um, um, right? breath, breast exams, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they don't do a lot of things that other places do. Um, and one of, of course, one of the reasons it doesn't do ultrasounds is that they it's don't. It's going to show life. Yeah, it, it, yeah it, it wants to keep the truth away from the women that go in there because they do make a lot of money on killing babies. Um, they might not, they might have a certain percentage of, of baby killing that occurs, uh, a smaller percentage than other uh, services they do, but the money made right. on that is, is, is. It's uh, tremendous. Yeah, it's tremendous. And people don't realize that. Yeah. And, and people don't, people don't realize I mean, these videos that came out last year, which is videos of discussions of, about baby parts, they, they yeah. want real videos of what goes on. And yeah. again, I go back, and he's going to be here in the state in October, New Hampshire Right to Life, for the annual banquet, is, is Father Pavone, is, yeah. is the guest speaker. Yeah. And his statement, America won't stop abortion until America sees abortion. And it's kind of gory, but he may be accurate. Because yeah. I don't think people think, oh, it's just this, it's just that, it's just this, it's well, just that. Well, if you, it does seem reasonable though, if many women choose life for their child after they see an ultrasound, then many pro-choice people will turn pro-life if they see what's really going on in an abortion. Yeah. It, it sort of follows. It did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because because the truth is being um, suppressed, and whenever it isn't, uh, a lot of people do respond. And that's our jobs, yeah. my job. Your job as a Catholic and as a Knight of Columbus is to speak the truth with mercy, but we need to speak the truth. We can't obfuscate. We can't say, eh, no, no, mm. we got, we, we, we got to be like a rock. We got to be like a stone because 50 years, it's taken 50 years yeah. for the culture of death to climax where it is now. Yeah. And we have to work at changing the culture and that's going to take the prayer. It's going to take everything. All four of these yeah. facets. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of leg legislative action, I understand that there is some legislation regarding baby safe haven. You want to explain what that is? Okay. 
Well, Baby Safe Haven is on the books. It was passed, was it 2003? But it was a good 11, 12 years ago. Basically, what it allows in this state, I think of up to seven days old, if a child is born up to seven days old, a woman could give up the child without any recriminations to what they call certain safe haven spots, be that a church, a fire department, a rescue department, a police department, and there may be a, a, a few others. But uh, it doesn't happen that often, obviously, but it is the fact that it, the Knights are beginning to promote this. What we want to give these women another opportunity to save their child. Mm. And what our state deputy, Wayne Griffin, and I'll give him credit, it was his brainchild when we discussed it last year, and he says, Ron, let's get on this, let's do more. And, uh, you know, brother Dave Ive and his daughter are making videos about it. But the Knights are paying for whatever the signs are for the safe haven signs. And that's, I mean, that's, uh, the, easy, that's the easy part. Okay. The difficult part is for each council to go to its local, you know, municipalities or go to their fire departments or wherever and to convince them mm. to put up the signs. Yeah. It's not like we're asking them to do more. If the mm. sign is up there and a woman decides to leave their baby, then they know what they must do because obviously the child's going to end up with DCYF care and th go through the, go through the, you know, the state is that, system. Is that what happens? Okay. Usually, usually, and, unless and they find an adoption, but... But are they eventually adopted out? These Sometimes children? some are, okay, and some are not. But okay. the point is that the child is given an op op opportunity. Mm. So that's what, we're, and we're trying to expand it again this year. So that's part of the work I guess I'll be doing this year, trying to uh, promote uh, with the councils uh, for them to contact their local uh, police and fire to get them to to put up the signs. It was a uh, at the dinner last year, and I think it was. Obviously, there was a YouTube of it a few years ago, but the bishop, and it happened, happened back in Queens, back in New York, and he's a fellow New Yorker like me, but he talked about the woman who was, it was near Christmas time, and had the baby and was passing the church and went into the church, I guess it was before Christmas, mm. and the creche was not full, wow. and she put the baby wow. into the creche mm. and left the baby there. And that, everybody was like, oh, my God, yeah. So she knew that wow. the baby's going to be, so that was in a, a church. So that was his emphasis to say, look, get out there, support yeah. this program. I think it's a great idea. You know, yeah. I, later in life, when I was an adult, I personally found out that uh, my grandmother was the result of a rape. Uh, you're, you're Italian, so am I. I have an Italian descent. <laughs> when she was uh, conceived and born in Italy, uh, back at the turn of the century. Um, apparently, um, I don't know if it was for, well, it probably was from rape because um, that's very often they, uh, it, it was, it was well, the such, poverty. such a shameful thing. The poverty. Or, or poverty, yeah. Yeah, the poverty. That what, uh, what my, apparently my great-grandmother, who of course I've never met, uh, did was uh, gave birth to my grandfather, uh, gr my grandmother, and gave her as a baby to, uh, I think it was a convent dropped her off at the convent, yeah, and this yeah. was a tradition, I, uh, supposedly, that they had back then. The nuns took the baby in, no questions asked, yeah. and adopted her out. And uh, just to take a, a perspective of this for a minute, um, to see how important this is. My grandmother was adopted out by those nuns, and her adopted family moved to America. Mm -hmm. She met my grandfather, who also moved to America. They got married. And they had my mother and my uncle, and, and eventually they got married to my father and my uncle, oh, yeah. and my aunt. Yeah. They, my uncle had uh, three children. My mother had five children. Uh, now they have 11 grand, uh, 12, something like <laughs> 11 grandchildren. Here's the bottom line. If my grandmother was aborted right. rather no, than dropped happen. off at that yeah. convent, right. exactly. my mother wouldn't exist, my uncle wouldn't exist, my brothers and sisters, my cousins, none of them would exist, and you would be doing yeah, something else today, yeah. or talking to somebody else in this chair, because I never would have existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One abortion, or one potential abortion, you don't know wipes what out an entire the results life are going to be. And generations. It, it's, it's missed opportunities. Yeah. It, it, it's missed 
development of, of, of someone's talents. Yeah. They say, where are all the good teachers? Where are all the good doctors? Where are all the good missionaries? Where, well, there's 53 million of them gone yeah. Yeah. because of abortion. Our society is, 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 is It's impossible to, to imagine worse. what the world would have been like today if abortion never became legal, if those 60 million uh, were here. And right now they're, what, under 35 years old, 1973? Yeah. No, everybody yeah. under, under 30 three, if I'm not mistaken. That's 40 years ago, right? 40. 43 years since <laughs> Roe v. Wade. 73 was 43 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, it's been that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. people under, one-third of all people under 43 years old today who are walking around are missing. That's right. Because of That's abortion. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. to touch on one thing, and I just, just to get back to it, because we, we mentioned about uh, legislative Yes, uh, legislative action. action. Right. When we talk about voting, I gave a talk once at, at the, uh, one of the conventions for the Knights about seven, eight years ago. And I got to say, I'll, be, I'll admit, it got mixed reviews because I made them uncomfortable. You Good know? for you. You know, it was like uh, afflicting the comforted, you know, instead of comforting they, the they, afflicted. They, that, what, what's and what's the was, old saying, that Christ came to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I you. did. Good. And I didn't ask him to answer me the question because it's not for me to say. But I said, now look at what these candidates have to offer. Now, look deep down into yourself what your Catholic faith means to you and what's important to you in your faith. If, it's, if, if you're truly living as Christ wanted us to live, mm. which is love, and love translates, and for me, to the, to the culture of life. Yes. Can you, and they hated this, but I could see some people going, yeah. can you commit a sin in the voting booth? And they went, ah. I said, don't answer it. I don't want you to answer it. I'd like but, to answer it. <laughs> well, I know, but I was, you know, yeah. talking yeah. to a group of 100 people. Right. I said, don't answer it right now. You need to think about this. You can't tell me. I, I, and I, this is the answer I always get. It's not the only issue. It's not the only issue. Huh. Well, it's one of the most important issues. Yeah. If you, you know, if you're going to vote for somebody because, oh, you know, they believe in, in, in this economic strategy or they believe in this, you know, uh, foreign policy, but they believe abortion at any time, then as your conscience dictates, hmm. you can't do that. Yeah. And if it, you can do that, then you haven't fully formed your conscience right. as a Roman Catholic. And it, like, I let it go because it was like, I got, Ron, Ron, oh, I'm going to say that, Ron. <laughs> Whenever you scratch people's consciences, it's always a good thing. You plant yeah. seeds. But um, it's really difficult to convince people to rise above their selfish interests to vote, yeah. to vote for what is the common good for, for the country. There you go. It's very, very go. difficult. Yeah. And yeah. how can you possibly say, and, and, you know, I am going to have a couple of people probably dislike me for what I'm about to say right now, but if we were living in Nazi Germany right now, and let's say they had a democracy, and their, vote, their, their, you know, their election was in November, and um, Hitler was running on a very um, attractive platform to a lot of people, the only thing they didn't like is that he's killing these Jews every day, um, you know, millions at a time in, in death camps. But right. other than that, he might have a good health care uh, uh, proposal. He might be good for uh, my understanding of education, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's, there's this other guy who I might not agree with everything, but at least he's against the killing of the Jews, that right. ongoing Holocaust that's Holocaust. happening. How many people do you think would vote for their own selfish interests and vote for Hitler? I think that's exactly what's going on right oh, now. We have a this is this is this is the 40 21st century holocaust. 4200 preborn children a day every single day are being killed before birth in this country. Yeah. How can you possibly go in there and vote anything else? That's a good that's a quite I'm just throwing the question I out. agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. But that's because it's funny because when I first started this job, and it, it was a learning process, there's a lot of things I fumbled around, obviously. You know, I was energetic, but you know, you still fumble <laughs> sometimes. And they asked me, and I'm, I, was list, I did a lot of listening. And they said, what do you think your biggest problem with building a culture of life is or defeating whatever? Yeah. And my answer was, 
Catholics. He yes. goes, what do you mean? I says, <laughs> give me a, I'll tell you what I mean. You got Catholics voting that they shouldn't vote. You got Catholics not living their faith. You've got Catholics' parents who don't go to church. My wife experienced this, it's just as an aside, when she was teaching CCD years ago. Never see the parents at church, never see anybody. Yeah. All of a sudden, they want their child confirmed. And my wife Marianne right. would say, but they didn't come to the classes. Right, right. And the priest would say, well, well, yeah. Marianne, Let's can you do a quick course, side. Quick right, course right, of, right. Uh, of confirmation to get them ready? Well, these yeah. kids don't know anything about the Catholic faith. They're just getting confirmed in yeah. name only. We, we are continuing the weakening of the church by doing that. Um, what, what, what I find interesting is it sort of matches last week's reading, gospel reading, I believe, that at the end of it, Christ said, um, for those who have been given much, much will be expected That's of it. them. Right. Catholics have been given much. To, to squander that and to become simply a, a person of the world who votes on selfish interests rather yeah. than yeah. caring about what's going on in terms of our culture of death, a serious problem, and I, and I fully agree with what you're saying there. Yeah, I mean, it's nobody's, I tell them, the Brother Knights, and I'm always mm. using the term evangelize, get out mm. there, speak the truth. Yeah. Even in a work situation, don't back down. I mean, you may not want to be, you know, Mother, so vociferous, but you, you, you got to you yeah, tell them, no, that's not right. Prudently. Prudently, prudently. right. With mercy. With mercy. In this year of mercy, with mercy. But yeah. mercy does not, uh, does not say you shouldn't speak the truth. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, Mother Angelica once said, um, if Catholics in this world, if Catholics were Catholics, the entire world would be transformed. Oh, yeah. yeah. The entire yeah. world would be transformed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, she's, we, that's where we, it starts. We, uh, we have our reruns on TV at, at <laughs> night. <laughs> in fact, I think she's on tonight, Tuesday night she's on. Yes. But uh, she has words of wisdom that, uh, I, you know, and it's funny because on well, my job, I really got to like keep a low profile, you know, because mm. everybody's so secular. I mean, some yeah. people go to church, but I had one guy, now, Ron, didn't the Pope, didn't they do away with, Purgatory, and I said, <laughs> and he's like, I said, when we last the church, well, you know, Christmas time, and right, you know, right. <laughs> so the secularism is yeah. so prevalent today, yeah. and it, 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 it's it's difficult to me, and especially, unfortunately, as a quote unquote government employee, I gotta keep my mouth shut because I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't, I just That's too bad. Okay, okay, you know, it's okay. funny. It's funny that. Um, you know, in our world today, Catholics get a secular education. They, they um, graduate high school. Uh, many of them get a four-year degree. They get a bachelor's. They graduate yeah, that. Yeah. Many of them get master's degrees. Some even get doctoral degrees. All of these, all of this secular knowledge and education that they spend years and years and years, and yet most of those same people have a seventh or eighth grade education, and I put it in quotes, of their Catholic faith. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What kind of sense does that make? It's, 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 it's no wonder that they're going to be fooled by, by the media and um, you know, the, the anti-Christian culture out I there. I mean, it took me a long time to get back to the sacrament of reconciliation. I think a lot mm. of men go through that, and I think that's just a natural process. But I tell people, you don't understand what, mm. you know, you're going to sin. You're a sinner. Yeah. You're a human being. Yes. But the relief or the, or the ability to say, God, I'm going to try harder. And, and a re d you can start again anew. Right. But yeah. Catholics don't use that. They line up for communion. Yeah. Oh, which Where is are a they which during, is a sacrilege during? if they're in mortal sin. But that's Who another, knows? That's Who another, knows? That's another yeah, right. We can do another hour that's on another that. another hour on yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think what you're saying is so Telling important. Telling John Kerry not to go to <laughs> confession, <laughs> go to, go to for, communion, maybe. For the Catholic, <laughs> and this is what I tell the kids, uh, I, I, uh, I run a... Uh, also a religious education program. So very often I say that uh, while baptism is like a spiritual bath, confession is like a spiritual shower. And how long would you go without taking a shower? That's right. That's, it's, it's really a good analogy because, like you say, you come out of there feeling re fully refreshed when you come yeah. out of the sacrament. And I confession. always was afraid that the priest would, Mary would say to me, Ron, they've heard yeah. it all. You're not giving yeah. them anything new. And they go, Ron, uh, Okay, okay, that was like, big deal, Yeah. you know? Yeah. 
But uh, you have to know what sin is in order to repent of it and confess it. And yeah. that's where, where bad catechesis comes in. To play. And that's unfortunate. Right. Well, we get another hour on that. That's what mm. happened in the 80s. Bad catechesis. Yes. 70s, 80s, 90s, <laughs> all the way up until the present time. <laughs> Hopefully it's, it's turning around right now. Um, if anybody's interested in adult education, for, uh, there's, there's plenty of resources for that, too. But I also teach a, uh, on Sunday mornings at St. Patrick's starting in September. Uh, adult catechesis. Did you, you took over yeah. Sister Elizabeth's um, She left, yeah. and yeah. You yeah, took over Sister I'm, Elizabeth? Yeah. Oh, pretty much, yeah. I'm doing my own thing. Because my wife and daughter go there a lot. Is that right? Yeah, because my mother-in-law, oh. when she was alive, would, oh, very good. she used to go to St. Pat's. They, they're they Roman Catholics. I like to right. move around. <laughs> Roman Catholics, right. Yeah, exactly. Roman Catholics. All right, how about upcoming events? Why don't we talk about what's going on with the Knights of Columbus okay. re, 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 regarding right to life? Okay, well, well, we'll start right out. I'll just go uh, a timeline here. Okay. Uh, it's something that we get involved with. Sometimes nights run it, but we don't always run it. But we have the uh, 40 Days for Life. We have the first 40 Days for Life coming up. Uh, it starts towards the end of September and goes up to Election Day. Okay. The next 40 Days for Life is, is during Lent. And that relates to prayerful presence in front of abortion clinics. Right, Okay. Right. Right. And we try to get people to sign up. I tell people it's easy. There's a website. Just go in, put your time in there. You can use it on, the, on your iPhone or whatever. Mm -hmm. Go up and pray. And I try to do it as much as possible. I try, right. it, it, and, so but Google. it's a prayerful, you know, it's to get for us to be there to tell them whoever is inside that, you know, we're not going away. We're here. Yes. We're here yeah. to pray for you. We, and and we, we're here to stay in witness. Go to away. We can't go away. No, right. when there's, so that, yeah. that's part of that. Uh, come, I'm just trying to think. Uh, well, how about uh, the uh, benefit that F uh, Father Pavone is going to be at? Oh, that's okay. That, that's yeah. run by New Hampshire Right to Life. Okay. They run that. I think Wayne's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Okay. But we try to get as many people to uh, go to that, uh, to that event, their annual uh, uh, fundraiser. Uh, this is a big name. I'm telling people, you know, this is... Father Frank Pavone. Pavone. Yeah. yeah, this is... Yeah. Great you know, guy. You yeah. know? Uh, there are other pregnancy centers that have their dinners, you know, uh, whether it's Birthright or uh, CareNet or uh, actually basically different CareNets. You know, we try to promote that. Uh, we try to get the councils. Usually October is, is like a Respect Life Month, too, and also dedicated to the Blessed Mother. We try to get them to have different things locally, whether it's a pro-life uh, rosary or uh, a mass or something like mm. that. Come in February, uh, we have what they call the birthright dinner. That's where we honor all the women who work for the pregnancy centers, and we make the collections for the different pregnancy centers to, to go out throughout the state to different non-perishable items. And then in, uh, this year on August 9th, not August 9th, apologize, April 9th, that must be Palm Sunday, the pro-life seminar is going to be up, at, again, up at St. Joseph's Cathedral in, uh, in Manchester. Manchester, and yeah. this year, uh, Avid Lamontagne is going to be the guest speaker. Very good. In the past, we've had some different priests come up, and one of the more powerful witnesses we have was, uh, and I think you've heard it, was uh, Rebecca Kiesling came. Yes. Rebecca, whose mother tried to have her aborted twice. She is twice. great. She is great. She gave yeah. a, a powerful witness at that. Yeah. And so like I, she, she is a living example of what is aborted and, yeah. and, and when somebody is raped. She's the result of her and rape. She's got a lot of children and she yeah. does a lot of good yeah. work in a parish there out, out in Michigan. We've got about a minute left. Do you okay. want to just um, sort of summarize for the people um, what we can do as individuals to, to at least our part in supporting the culture of life? I think, uh, as I said before, the first thing that we can do is pray, try to be the close as close to God as possible. I always left the nights with this little mantra. Mm. And I said, you remember if you ran track, they would say, get on your mark, it said go. Yeah. And I changed my mark to M-A-R-C. I said, you need mass, you need adoration, you need rosary, and you need confession. And if you become close to God, then you're gonna be open to the education, to the outreach. He will inspire you. To the people, to the political, uh, legislation of activities that we need to do to build the mm. culture of life. So you've got to pray to God that you get the Holy Spirit to uplift you and to make you understand that if we don't 
go away from what's going on now, then our country is in, 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 in serious trouble. And if we don't, do, if we don't take, do our part in trying to combat it, then perhaps spiritually we are in serious trouble. Exactly, exactly. Very good. Thank you for coming. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Ron? Thank you. Very Ron, good. Ron Excellent. Dostasio. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed our conversation. Have a good night, everybody. Oh.